from thy bright heavenly throne. Come take possession of our souls and make them all thy own. Thou who art called the paraclete, best gift of God above, the living spring. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And welcome everybody to our Mass this evening, the Mass of the Holy Spirit, where we're asking for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be renewed and refreshed in us, that we can live out the wonderful vocation that God has given each and every one of us. And so to prepare ourselves then to celebrate together, let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies that your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency 
praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. He will conceal you with his wings. You will not fear the terror of the night. He will conceal you with his wings. You will not fear the terror of the night. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, My refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. He, he will conceal you with, with his wings. You will not fear the terror of the night. It is he who will free you from the snare of the fowler who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. He will, he will conceal, conceal me with, with his wings. wings. No, you will no, no, no. not fear the terror of the night. Hallelujah. Lord has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening again everybody. John. Today's theme of Domitian is the gift of the Holy Spirit. There was a young boy who was on his way to go to confession on his brand new bike and when he got to the church he realized he had forgotten his padlock but because he was doing confirmation he had learned that the Holy Spirit was there to protect him. So he said a prayer to the Holy Spirit and he said, Holy Spirit, look after my bike. And then he went into confession and he went in the name of the Father and the Son. And the priest said, I think you forgot something. What about the Holy Spirit? He said, he better be outside looking after my bike. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is there to protect us. He was known as the Advocate. In my previous life as a gangster, often I had to have a defender, a solicitor. Most of them were as bent as a nine bob note, but they were very, um, very corrupt. But they were also very good at protecting me and defending me. But the Holy Spirit is also there as someone who challenges us. He challenges us to be a better version of ourselves. He challenges us to be the best version of ourselves. It's a true story of six businessmen 
who are running to catch a train and they would they'll make a lot of money at the end of this train journey and one of the guys ran into a young boy who was selling some apples by the side of the station and all these apples went tipping all over the station and they all got on the train another one of the guys who actually hadn't run into the apple seller decided to get off the train and help the little boy and when he got off the train the train pulled away and he realized that he wasn't making any money that day and he also realized that the little boy was blind his mom had actually left him there while she went to help his little brother who had had an accident and so this man started picking up the apples and he noticed that some of them were damaged so he gave the little boy some money for the damaged apples and as he turned to walk away the little boy said are you Jesus? are you Jesus? that man was actually doing an RCIA course and becoming a Catholic and the little boy who had no idea where his apples were said a desperate prayer to Jesus to help him and Jesus spoke to the one person's heart that was open to him the one who was doing the RCIA course and so of course when the, he suddenly had all his apples returned to him and the damaged apples paid for the little boy just assumed that Jesus had come in person the Holy Spirit had whispered in that man's heart and he answered that whisper in my own life I remember a time when I was taking a friend to get some physio and as he was coming out of physio there was a lady who was very distraught and I realized that she had lost her husband he had just died and I felt the Holy Spirit saying to me to go over and comfort her and speak to her about Jesus' love for her but because the doctors were there and the nurses I was too embarrassed so I just drove home and I couldn't get this guilt out of my heart the next day I was coming back on the tube train and I don't know if you've been on tube trains in London but they're always late at night packed solid and it's like everyone's waiting for a conversation to listen to because they're all bored stiff and I felt the Holy Spirit say to me take the Divine Mercy card out of your wallet and give it to the man next to you I thought my God this is far worse than yesterday <laughs> and I felt the Holy Spirit say you don't ignore me again so I took this card out and I gave it to the man next to me and he immediately began to weep and he said you don't know what this means to me and I said I don't but this is my stop and I'll pray for you and I bolted off as quickly as I could you know I met a priest who was ordained many years ago a bit like Father Ralph and um, he told me that how he was nearly drummed out of seminary because he couldn't get up at 6.30 no matter how many alarm clocks he set he just could not physically get up at 6.30 and they would die throw him out of cemetery uh, sorry, seminary not cemetery <laughs> was he like a cemetery father? <laughs> into the cemetery yeah. uh, yes, so he said that he was gonna actually be thrown out and he said to me, John, ask me what time I get up I said, what time do you get up father? he said 6.30 and I've been doing that for over 40 years he said practice makes perfect and the more I've practiced being open to those whispers of the Holy Spirit the more it's become second nature to me and I mean this in all humility because I'm just a stone who God speaks to and speaks through but I was doing a youth retreat for about 45 kids in Navin in Ireland and every one of these kids went to confession except one girl and no matter how many prayers I said for this girl to go to confession she wouldn't go to confession 
So I just said to God, if I get a chance to speak to her, then please let me have that opportunity. Later on that night, she was on her own with some friends, and I said, can I have a word with you? And she said, yeah. And we went outside, and I said, I know why you didn't go to confession. She said, no one knows me. She said, my father doesn't know me. My mother doesn't know me. Not even my boyfriend knows me. No one knows me. I said, you're wrong. Jesus knows you. The reason why you didn't go to confession is because you was abused by your uncle. She immediately started getting very hysterically crying. And she said, how did you know? And I said, I didn't know, but Jesus knows. And he doesn't want you to be a prisoner of that man's sin. You don't have to confess that because you didn't do anything wrong. Do you know, the next day she went to confession and she ran along this corridor, threw herself in my arms and she said, you're right, he does know me and I've just met him. She went on to say that that confession completely changed her life. If you was to tell me what I was to say to that girl, I would have run a mile. And again, I mean this in all humility, I was in Melbourne just a few months ago doing a load of missions and the guy who got me over to Melbourne, me and him went out for a meal and he was very tired and I had a sort of bit of a go at him about being tired and anyway we're driving back in the car and I felt that because he had put himself out so much for God I wanted to show him that God was really blessing him. And I just said to him, I said, you know, David, you've really helped God on this trip. And I said, I feel God wants to give you a gift. And he went, oh, what's that? I said, I know what your guardian angel's called. And he said, you know, 10 years ago, there was this woman who sort of had different visions. And she told me what my guardian angel was called, but I didn't believe her. And I said, your guardian angel's Henry. And he immediately pulled over the car and he said, that's the name she gave me 10 years ago. Now, what are the chances of me picking out of all the millions of names that same name that she had picked out 10 years earlier? And he's praying earnestly to Henry, his guardian angel. Again, if you was to tell me that I would have had that understanding and knowledge it wouldn't happen but God has that understanding and knowledge because I practice being open to the whisper of the Holy Spirit when I was working with Saint Mother Teresa she said something to me that really changed my life she said when you share your story you glorify Jesus and that's why I've been sharing my story in the last 30 years and she also showed me what it was to give until it hurts. She was asked once why that saying came about. And do you know what she said? She said they were about to have their tea in the convent in Calcutta. And there was a knock on the door. And this man said about a Hindu family that was starving. So she immediately took the bowl of rice that her and the other sisters would there eat and she went round to this Hindu family. She said it was like looking at five human skeletons, a mother and her four children. And she placed this big bowl of rice on the table and immediately the mother took out an empty bowl, put half the rice in it and went out the door. And then she came back in and the bowl was empty. And she said, where did you go with all that rice? She said, my Muslim neighbor is also starving. My Muslim neighbor is also starving. Mother Teresa said, she began to cry. And she understood for the first time in her life what it was to give until it hurts. That Hindu mother had fed her neighbor before even feeding herself and her own children. So when I came back from working with Mother Teresa, I expected I wanted to give again, because I was sick of taking in life. 
And I started working with the homeless. And I used to have this lie in my heart that anyone who was homeless was a drunk or a druggie. And I remember one of the first guys I met on the streets, I said to him, you should stop abusing alcohol. He said, I don't drink alcohol. I said, well then you should stop abusing drugs. He said, I don't take drugs. Now at the time I used to smoke, so as you can see I gave up smoking. I said, this is the hypocrite I was, I said, well you should stop smoking. He said, I don't smoke. He said, do you know what you should do? He said, you should stop judging people. He taught me far more than I taught him. Another time we was giving out some sandwiches and we had some ham sandwiches, cheese sandwiches and chicken sandwiches. And I said to this guy, do you want a cheese sandwich? He said, I don't like cheese. I thought the cheek, he's meant to be starving and he doesn't like cheese. Well, he must have known what I was thinking because he said, just because you're homeless and hungry, it doesn't suddenly make you like cheese. I thought, good point. So after that, I used to say, would you like ham, chicken or cheese? And other people we used to help and visit were housebound people. One lady was called Winifred. She had leukemia. She was a Quaker. And each time I'd go around and see her, before I'd leave, she'd ask me to say a prayer with her. And I'd say a prayer, and then there was like a silence, almost like she was waiting on the Holy Spirit. But she never prayed. On one occasion she prayed, and to my dying day, I will never forget what it was like praying with Jesus Christ. I visited in the hospital the night she died, and I gave her a rosary, and she said, I know what this is. This is Our Lady's hand, and she'll lead me to Jesus. Do you know she died exactly one hour after I gave her that rosary? Pray for us sinners now, and at the very hour of our death. Pray for our sinners now, and at the very hour of our death. And other people we used to help were kids who were dying. We used to take them to Lourdes with a charity called The Cross in these jumbler ambulances. One little boy was called Stephen and he had cancer of the spinal cord. But you even looked at this little boy and he'd give you a smile that would melt your heart. And when I used to pick him up in my arms, before he'd had one of these terrible spasms because his spinal cord was shot to bits because of the cancer, he'd pucker his lips so that during the spasm he could kiss me on the side of the face. He taught me more about love than I could have ever taught him. But the person I think I was really helping when I was visiting those homeless guys was a part of my own wounded heart because I know what it's like to not have a home. And when I was visiting Winifred, it was like I was visiting a part of my heart, because I know what it's like to be in prison like she was in prison. And when I was holding Stephen in my arms, I was holding a part of my heart in my arms, because I know what it's like to be ten and have no one love you. I think it's through giving that we receive. And the more I've learned to give, the more I've received. I love the analogy of a candle when it goes into a darkened room. And the candle says, I beg to differ. This room isn't full of darkness anymore. Now it's full of light. I had the honour of meeting my second living saint, Saint John Paul II. And he went through all the darkness in our world today the horrendous drug addiction. Do you know, I was doing a talk in the secondary school today and it reminded me of a school I did in Carlo. And a 15-year-old girl came up to me and she said to me, I'm on crack cocaine and I'm using prostitution to pay for my addiction. Where has my innocence gone? When I was 12, I never knew this hell existed. I will never forget 
her eyes, when I looked into her eyes, this deadness and pain. And I just thought, why hadn't anyone spoken to her about the love of God for her when she was 12? She never would have experienced that hell. And when I was looking at some of the girls' eyes today, I saw that joy and that light because they knew they were loved and they knew that Jesus was there with them. He also said about the evil of abortion, where even the mother's womb wasn't a place of sanctity anymore. I worked outside abortion clinics all over the world, praying for the women and the men for that matter, who were dragging some of the women in those abortion clinics. And I can tell you I was praying just as much as when they were coming out of the abortion clinics as when they were going in. You know, I always remember one car sticker I saw, abortion, one dead and one wounded. He also went on to say about the materialistic greed in our society, where even a place where people live in palaces, why other people starve. One place I visited like that was in Argentina. This woman who lived on a ranch, which was over a thousand acres. And you know, she actually got a petition up against a priest who was running an orphanage to stop these orphan kids taking her water out of one of her rivers. <laughs> Just incredible greed. But he said there's one thing that the darkness cannot put out. He said that's the light. He said you are the light of Christ. Burn for Christ and burn brightly and never be afraid for the darkness can never overtake the light. I think every time we light a candle, every time we're willing to stand up for Jesus and his holy church, every time we come to Mass and we receive the Eucharist, every time we're willing to stand up against tyranny or against bullying or unjust behaviour in our world, we become that light and we transform our world from darkness to that light. So I expect as the mission really finishes, the mission really begins and it's up to us to be that light of Christ, knowing that he's there with us in every moment of our battle along this world walking with us, encouraging us, and even carrying us if we let him. I often think of the most worst times of my life and how much God was there with me. And I also look at the best times of my life and how much God was there with me. So I expect because I've lived so many years without God, I appreciate so much the love that God shows me every minute of every day. That pearl of great price to me is being able to love and able to give. Just finally, someone said to me, there's a big match on tonight, Man United, I believe, the Red Devils. I haven't got a lot of time for them, I'm afraid. We need God's team, Father, West Ham. But yeah, their stadium is meant to be incredible. I think I went there once with uh, my godson because he was uh, into them. But their stadium is meant to be incredible. But someone said to me that when we die, we'd die walk into one of the biggest stadiums that we could ever imagine or see. And in all the terraces, and there'll be all the saints and angels and all the people who have gone before us. And when someone like Saint Mother Teresa walks into that stadium, a cheer goes up that shakes the world we live in. Or when Saint John Paul II walked into that stadium, again a cheer went up that shook the world we lived in. Because when he was hungry, they fed him. When he was naked, they clothed him. When he was thirsty, 
they gave him a drink. When he was in prison, they visited him. Because when we do this to the least of our brothers and sisters, we do it to Jesus. When we walk into that stadium, what's the response there be to what we've done with our lives? I pray that we get a greater cheer than even those great saints. Because the only thing I found worth living for is that grace of serving God. And the only thing I found worth dying for is that grace of serving God. So as the mission really ends, the mission really begins. I keep on forgetting to say, just lastly, I have some miraculous medals on your way out for anyone who wants a miraculous medal. These medals are actually from the Rue de Bac, where Our Lady appeared to St. Margaret Laboret. And they're all blessed. So if you want to leave a donation, you can, but don't think you have to. But if you can, it just means I'll get more medals. But they're all blessed and they are miraculous. So please take as many as you like on your way out. And there's also some books for the good secondary school young people who I see in the church, which is lovely to see. So you can get a personal signed copy of my book. And there's also some um, rosary packs for all the young people who are here as well. So thank you very much for all of you who have attended the mission over the last few days. You've been a real witness to me of that light in this world that's so desperately in need of it. And please pray for me because I'm in the primary school tomorrow and then I start another mission on Saturday in Liverpool and then a third mission in Manchester before Christmas. So God keeps me busy. So please keep me in your prayers and know that you're in my prayers. So God bless you. The um, gifts are going to be brought up now for the uh, offertory, the bread and the wine, of course, which you need for the Mass, but also the basket is going to be brought up and placed before uh, Our Lady's icon of the perpetual succor there. And if you, you know, all the prayers, intentions that you asked for last night, the night before, and wrote down, they're coming up and will be remembered before the throne of mercy during this Mass. If you haven't um, put one in and you'd like to for some special intention, you can do that now and just slip up and put it in the basket as well. Thank you very much. Lots of people's hopes and dreams and wishes and, uh, you know, people they're praying for, they're all here and um, obviously very powerful that they're going to be here as we call down the Holy Spirit to help us in our own particular pilgrimage through life. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, we pray, Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you, John. Peace with John. Peace be with you, John. Peace be with you, Peace be with you, Mary. Peace be with you. God bless.
Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of Christ and the body of Christ Mike. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ Mike. Body of Christ, William. Body of Christ, Mary. Body of Christ, Lola. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, Meg. Body of Christ, Margaret. The body of Christ, John. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Keith. Yeah. Just come down. Come down together, two. Two lines. Two lines. Yeah. Body of Christ, The body of Christ. The body of Christ, honey. Body of Christ, son. Body of Christ, you know. Body of Christ, Pauline. Body of Christ, Brian. Body of Christ, son. Body of Christ, Megan. Body of Christ, man. Body of Christ, George. Body of Christ. Who's in? Blessing of Christ be in your heart. Stay with you now for the day, yeah? Body of Christ, Brenda. Body of Christ, Mike. Body of Christ, Teresa. Body of Christ, Mike. <clears throat> Body of Christ, Maria. Body of Christ, Terry. Body of Christ, Sue. The Body of Christ, Ma. Body of Christ. The Body of Christ, Jane. The blessing of Christ be in your heart and stay with you now forever. Body of Christ, Ms. Body of Christ, Claire. The Body of Christ, Sam. The body of Christ, Kevin. Body of Christ, Lord. The body of Christ, Jake. The body of Christ, Mother. The body of Christ, Luis. The body of Christ, Mother. The body of Christ, Sarah. Body of Christ in it. The body of Christ, Lord. The body of Christ. Body of Christ, Lord. Body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ
body of Christ, the body of Christ, the blessing of Christ be in your heart and stay with you now forever. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, yes, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. The the body of Christ, 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 the blessing of Christ be in your heart and stay with you now forever. The body of Christ, Katie. The blessing of Christ be in your heart and stay with you now for the body of Christ, Katie. The body of Christ, yeah. The body of Christ, Sarah. Body of Christ, Clive. The body of Christ, Katie. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. William making his debut tonight so he's done very well hasn't he that's great yeah well listen just sit down for a sec please that's lovely um, you know the success of something like this mission uh, 
does rely on lots and lots of things. It relies on uh, especially the people who, you know, organize everything. Um, and, uh, you know, the beautiful decorations we've had of the altar, the music, the uh, people who've got everything ready. Uh, it's just been fantastic, really. It's been live streamed out to people who can't be with us here today. But I think you'll agree that the most important thing is the... Um, the contribution that John has made to this really has been a fantastic mission. I mean, he, this morning he spoke to about maybe four or five hundred young people at um, Cardinal Allen, and you could have heard a pin drop. It was just wonderful the way he had them all there. And of course, afterwards, he was only supposed to be there for an hour. I said, see you back at the base then, about half eleven. He got back about quarter to one, I think because the kids were so fascinated and they all went in to have some people had one-to-one -one with him and everything that I think you'll agree that it, God has anointed him he has a tremendous th those stories he told tonight about being able to you know recognize what was going on in somebody's life he's told me loads of stories like that and I think God just uses in, in him in that way to you know prompt people to really let go of all their inhibitions and all the pain that they've stored up for years and years you know it all comes flooding out because they realize that he is an apostle of mercy of God's forgiveness and there's hope for everybody so I really would like us all to show our appreciation for John for this wonderful mission and the grace of having him with us for these three days I've known John for many years, of course. He stays with me many times. Um, he gets a free lunch or two when he comes here, uh, which you say, well, that's nothing. But he eats twice as much as the rest of us. So it <laughs> cost me a fortune. Well, not really, because he paid for lunch today, which was amazing. I mean, it was lovely. It was fantastic. <laughs> so once again, thank you very much, John, for being with us. I know you're available after Mass now if people would still want to have a wee chat with you, and you're most welcome to do that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people's cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send?
I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will send the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till your hearts are satisfied.